It's the greatest health threat to women and takes more lives than all forms of cancer combined. And while heart disease statistics are striking, most cases are preventable. Today, two experts in cardiology will help us all learn how to better protect our hearts. Dr. Jane Farr and Dr. Anne-Marie Navarre. Thank you for joining us. Dr. Navarre, February is heart month, so at a time when many of us are thinking about how to improve our heart health Beyond exercising more and, and eating right, what are some other things that we should be thinking about to improve our heart health? The first step would be to sort of figure out where you have room for improvement, your current exercise habits, where you might have room for improvement in your diet, um, but other things that you may be doing related to your heart health, like smoking or vaping or excessive alcohol intake. And then from our end as physicians, it's also really important that you know what your blood pressure is and what your cholesterol levels are. And then either make sure that you have your blood pressure measured at your doctor's office, or what we're increasingly recommending is for people to get a good home blood pressure cuff, one that goes on your upper arm. And you would really wanna make sure to talk to your doctor if your home blood pressures are running over about 135 on the top, the systolic number, or over 80 to 85 on the bottom, because that might be another opportunity for a way that you can maybe start medicine to lower your risk of heart disease. Dr. Farr, what effect do you think the pandemic has had on heart health overall? Are we seeing more patients with heart disease um, throughout the pandemic? At the beginning, because there was such a lockdown emergency situation, there were so many patients who didn't come into the hospital. So there were a lot of uh, missed myocardial infarctions, or when they did come, it was such a delayed presentation that people were that much sicker, and there were a lot of poor outcomes associated with that. One of the hard things that was about COVID is that some of the risk factors for poor outcome, if you were to get COVID, are risk factors that are associated with heart disease, like hypertension, diabetes, and obesity. So I do think that we've seen a lot of morbidity and mortality um, in patients who contracted COVID who had or had those uh, risk factors. Dr. Navarro, one challenge for cardiologists is that many people consider heart disease a disease of older people. At what age should people really become concerned about their heart health and be more attentive to their risk factors? If we think about the biology of heart disease, it's actually a process that starts really early in life, as early as our teens. So the sooner you begin, the more you start to benefit. And the more you can start to sort of bend the curve and prevent the cholesterol from depositing in your artery walls in the first place and keep you free of disease for a nice, long, healthy lifetime. Dr. Farr, heart disease and stroke account for one in three deaths in women in the United States. Why do you think women are at heightened risk? One is, is are women being, uh, first of all, are women even being studied in all the clinical trials that, are, um, that can sort of look at the biology and the prevalence of these diseases. That's the first thing. And there's a whole literature on that. I think the second thing is the biology of women changes over their lifetime. Not that it doesn't for men either, but a premenopausal woman is very, very different than a perimenopausal and a postmenopausal woman. So that's the next thing. I think the third thing is access to care. Women will put themselves last and have to sacrifice uh, healthy lifestyles, exercise. So there's lots of ways that women just don't get the attention that they need to get the care that they need that would change some of these, um, these uh, death statistics. Dr. Navarre, what type of symptoms would, should a woman be concerned about in terms of her risk factors for a heart disease or stroke? The truth is, if we look at everybody who shows up to the emergency room with a heart attack, men and women both, typically the symptoms are pretty typical. So most people have the very classic symptoms of a heart attack, like chest pain, chest pressure, uh, radiation of pain down their arm, up their neck, to their back. So you don't feel if your blood pressure is mildly elevated. You don't feel it if your cholesterol is high. You often don't even feel it if you have mild elevations in your blood sugar or prediabetes or sort of barely into the diabetes range. That's why it's really important that uh, everybody, even those people without symptoms, get routine health visits because by treating these risk factors early, before they cause symptoms, we can actually prevent heart attacks and we can prevent a lot of the heart failure that Dr. Farr and her team then have to take care of after those risk factors have been uncontrolled for entirely too long. 
Dr. Navarre, as cardiologists, we emphasize it's important to know your family history of heart disease. Why is that important? If you have a first degree relative with premature heart disease or stroke or multiple first degree relatives with premature heart disease or stroke, your risk is increased as well. The other thing we look for is people who have a family history of extremely high LDL cholesterol levels, because that also tends to run in families. There's another type of cholesterol that we're increasingly screening for too in people that have a family history of heart disease, and that's called lipoprotein A. So for people that have a premature family history, it's really important, both because it increases your risk of heart disease overall, but also it probably means that you need to pay closer attention to your LDL cholesterol and talk to your doctor about whether or not you should have your lipoprotein A level checked as well. Dr. Farr, you lead our heart failure and heart transplant programs at UT Southwestern. What is heart failure and how is it treated and can it be reversed? Heart failure is really a syndrome of exercise or exertional intolerance combined with congestion and inability to perform activities of daily living that is associated with some sort of structural heart disease, whether the heart has systolic dysfunction where the heart muscle is not contracting or even what's called diastolic dysfunction where the heart muscle is stiff. The prevalence of this disease in the United States is about seven to eight million now and, um, and there's simply not enough people to take care of all these patients with this burgeoning disease. Dr. Navarro, less than 50% of women have optimal heart health entering pregnancy. How should a woman who's thinking about becoming pregnant or who is already pregnant be thinking about their own heart health? Making sure that we do everything we can to optimize our bodies before we get pregnant is a really important way to help the lower the risk of cardiovascular complications. That can include starting off at a healthier weight, and it doesn't mean a totally normal weight, but even small amounts of weight loss, five to eight pounds, can cause meaningful reductions in blood sugar and meaningful reductions in blood pressure. So there are things that we can do before pregnancy, things that we can do during pregnancy, and then critically important, and Dr. Farr kind of alluded to this earlier, is to remember that a woman's health is equally important after she delivers a baby. We have to continue to take care of our women patients after they deliver to make sure that we're doing everything we can to prevent those long-term complications. Dr. Farr, it's February, so not too late to make a New Year's resolution. What would your number one priority be for women as they think about how to improve their heart health uh, this year? Obviously, if you already have heart disease, you need a structured exercise program and cardiac rehab um, is, can be a very important part of this. But for patients who are generally well, exercising is critically important. For many patients, this is hard to do. COVID has made this very difficult from a social environment perspective, but exercise, we our blood pressure goes down, we lose weight, we have that more what's called vascular relaxation. It improves our mindset. People are less likely to smoke, drink alcohol, and in particular for women, low weightlifting as part of your regimen is really, really important not just for fitness and to decrease frailty, um, but also to help you burn calories um, so that you can sort of have a heart healthy diet and, and still stay slim. Thank you both for being here. February is an important month as we all focus on heart health and we appreciate all the great advice you've given to all of us. Thanks, Dr. Warner. It's been great being here. Thank you, Dr. Warner. It was, it was my pleasure. Until next episode, stay safe and stay healthy.